We've just returned from an awesome two-week trip to Scotland. Starting in Glasgow, we headed northwest to the Scottish Highlands, visiting the Isles of Mull, Iona, and Skye, then north to Ullapool, across to the Orkney Islands, down to Inverness and St. Andrews, and then on to Edinburgh. It was our first time in the UK, and the countryside is absolutely beautiful, like this view out over Loch Ness. Scotland also has over a thousand castles, and we saw and toured through a lot of them, including spectacular Dunrobin Castle, high on a hill overlooking the North Sea. We were on a guided motor coach tour, but since we plan to rent an RV next time, we wanted to see how they're different from what we're used to. The thing that surprised us most was how many RVs we saw. There were more of them than we ever expected, and there were commercial RV parks campgrounds, and even boondocking spots all over the place. And just like in the U.S. and Canada, we spotted lots of RVs parked alongside homes, just waiting for the weekend or a holiday. The most obvious difference between the rigs in North America and those in Scotland was length. The vast majority of rigs are much smaller, mostly about the length of a small or medium-sized Class C. The longest motorhomes we saw were about 30 feet, but they were few and far between. And of course, most Scottish RV parks aren't designed to handle longer rigs. There's also the challenge of driving on small, narrow roads, which are actually single track in some places. To avoid head-on collisions, you have to pull over in turnouts, which are called passing places, while other traffic carefully passes by we had our share of tight squeezes in the bus. A couple of notes about terminology here in the UK. The term RV isn't used. Motorized rigs are referred to as motorhomes, the same as we're used to, but trailers are called caravans. RV parks are called caravan parks or caravan sites. And what we would call a site or a campsite is called a pitch. We call this type of rig a Class C, while the owner of this one called it a coach-built unit. Similar to our Class A motorhomes, this type of rig is referred to as an A-Class. Class B RVs are called camper vans, and fifth wheels are virtually non-existent, so they don't seem to have a name for those at all. During our trip, we didn't see a single fifth wheel. Maybe that's because pickup trucks are so rare here. Another thing that's totally missing in Scotland is slide outs. Over two weeks, we easily saw over a thousand RVs, but we never saw a single one with even one slide out. We noticed that all of the pitches we saw were either electric only or no hookup at all. We didn't see any that had water or sewer hookups. We only visited about four caravan sites, so we don't know how common water hookups are, but we're told they do exist. We also asked about full hookups, and we're told that there's something called a super pitch, which offers electric, water, and sewer connections, but still might not be long enough to handle a big motorhome. We noticed that caravans, remember that's a travel trailer, are mostly very small and light. Lots of people tow them with regular passenger cars, which generally aren't up to the task in North America due to the heavier weight of typical travel trailers there. As far as motorhomes go, every owner we asked was driving a diesel-powered rig. Several owners were kind enough to invite us into their rigs for a tour. Men. You're welcome. Oh, thank you so much. If you look round the corner, there's a television in the bedroom. <laughs> wow. How much time do you spend a year in it? A lot. Careful? You've got everything you have at home. There's even a cooker hood, an extractor hood. You've got four, I put that there to stop it rattling. There's four rings, a grill, an oven, built-in microwave. These chairs, when we park up, these chairs swivel round. 
just swing round into the main part. And this makes into another bed if we have guests. How many people would it sleep total? Four, four. And how long is it in feet? 26 foot. And another television here. Oh yes. So if I'm watching my soap operas, he can go in there and watch his sport, you see. Now, does it run on gas or diesel? Diesel. It's a 3.2 litre engine. Well, thank you so much for showing it You're to welcome. me. You're welcome. It's beautiful. The majority of motorhomes we saw also had manual transmissions. It's hard to imagine the typical North American RVer driving a stick shift. Because they drive on the left in the UK, motorhomes built here are right-hand drive with the entrance door and awning on the left side. Because the rest of Europe drives on the right side of the road, Continental units are the same as in North America, with the steering wheel on the left and the entrance door and awning on the right. But even that isn't set in stone. We saw several motorhomes with right-hand steering, but with the door and awning also on the right, like this unit here. There didn't seem to be any absolute rule about it. Another thing that's all over the map as far as layout goes are the hookups. Electrical connections generally seem to be on the right, but not always, since the electric pedestals were usually behind and often far away from the pitch it didn't really matter, since a long cord was needed no matter which side of the RV it was on. The Greywater outlet can be on either side of a rig too. This is an example of a typical Greywater outlet that we saw on several units. This owner showed us how to turn a special key on the side of the rig to release the Greywater underneath the right side. Here's another Greywater outlet, this time on the left side of the rig. Every RV we checked out used the same system for dealing with black water. A cassette on the side of the rig, under the toilet, accessible through a panel in the side of the RV. You pull it out and take it to the dump. Since it has to be directly under the toilet, some are on the right side and some are on the left, depending on where the bathroom is. Everyone we spoke with seemed very used to having limited water on board and they just used the park's restrooms most of the time and dumped their toilet every couple of days since the cassettes are so small. Do you put drinking water right inside here? Yeah. yeah. You fill You fill yeah. here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and this is the whole tank? No, no. no. Oh, I see. Oh, it's there, much bigger. And, and under the, under the... So when you want to stop and get fresh water, you just take this cap off and fill here? Yeah. 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 Another thing that was almost totally absent was towing. During our entire trip, we only saw one motorhome with a tow car. This is it, street camping with an electrical hookup to a nearby house. Across the street is their smart car, which they tow around on this adorable little trailer. Since there are so many islands, lots of RVers get to their campsites on the ferry system. We were on several ferries with our bus, and there were RVs on all of them. All in all, we saw a lot more motorhomes than caravans. A rough guesstimate is that we spotted about three motorhomes for every caravan. We even spotted some cool units that appeared to be custom made. One of our favorite rigs was this B-Mobile, made in Germany. The owners were eager to show us their cool indoor-outdoor space. Next time we're back in this awesome part of the world, we'll look forward to renting an RV ourselves. Lots of things are different, but some things are pretty much the same. Be sure to connect with us on our website, howtorvgeeks.com, where you can subscribe to hear about our newest RV video tips as soon as they're released. Thank you.